Anyway, it's lovely to be here. And I'm reading uh, from the Scriptures in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, reading from verse 14. And in the New King James, it reads like this, For the love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we know him thus no longer, for Christ we knew from the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ Jesus, and has given us this ministry of reconciliation, that is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now it reads slightly differently in the NLT, so I'm going to be a bit slower reading it there, so that we get the the gist of what actually is being said. And what starts off with, either way, Christ's love controls us. Now, if I were to stop there, that would be enough. Because you could also ask a question, lots of questions, considering some of the songs we have sung this morning about surrender and all the rest of it. And the simple question is, does he really control everything in your life, of who you are and of what you are? I'll leave that question for you. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we all have died to our old life. Are you getting what it says there? We've all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Wow, there's a challenge. Do we live for ourselves, or do we live to serve others and to serve Christ? Instead, they live for Christ, who died and was raised for them. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view how differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God then has given us this task of reconciling other people to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them, and he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. Wow. It just gives a whole different light to what Christ has done for us and what we are becoming. A couple of months ago, you know, when you look at the Scriptures, very often when you look at Jesus' ministry on the earth, he often uses everyday illustrations to bring forth the truths of God. And I'm going to try to bring an everyday illustration that happened to us a couple of months ago and try to bring it into a spiritual sense, in that sense, to help us today. Is there anybody here who does not have a mobile phone? Not one of us. We've all got a mobile phone. All right? Well, a couple of months ago, my lovely wife's phone decided to pack up. It died a death. And no matter what we tried for a day or two to try to get this thing moving again, it just would not happen. Can you imagine what it would have been like for my lovely wife to be without a phone? Imagine yourself without a mobile phone for three or four days. Go on, just think about the crisis that it might cause in your life. Devastation. No WhatsApp, no TikTok, no Facebook. 
I can see people watching already. Nothing, no texts. Nobody be able to, uh, uh, this is the one blessing, nobody able to get in touch with you unless you're in the house on the phone. Can you imagine it? Horrendous. Absolutely unbelievable. All those lovely photographs that you've got on your phone, no longer accessible. <gasps> Panic stations. So I tried when I came home from work to trot it out, no chance. It was a couple of days before eventually we were able to get into Swansea uh, to the phone shop. And the young lad that was there, you know, young, these young people in phones, they really know all about them, don't you? I'm, as somebody said this morning, and I'm not going to name them or shame them or anything like that there, but they introduced me as the old pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Did it break your heart? <laughs> Only joking only joking. But the old phone decided it had enough. So we took it into the young lad down in Swansea, and he messed about for about half an hour to a quarter of an hour. Nothing. And eventually, he managed to lock the thing down, close it down. And we were all celebrating. Well, he then starts to boot it back up. And the young man, he was lovely. He was amazing. The diagnosis of the phone was, it was old. It was overloaded. It wasn't much use any longer. You need a new phone. The old phone had to go. And she had to have a new phone. Well, the amazing thing is, she wasn't nagging, but she had been dropping hints for a few weeks that she needed a new phone. It's amazing how these lovely ladies always get what they want. Oh, sorry, none that doesn't exclude any, that excludes you all here. Anyway, so we agreed that she would have a new phone. But the young lad said, leave it with me. So we chose the phone and all the rest of it. And this new phone, well, if ever you saw a gleam in Flora's eyes, all this extra data, umpteen gigabytes compared to a few megabytes, you all know what gigabytes and megabytes are. I don't. All the new data that she would be able to access. There would be about four or five times the amount of apps on the phone. Can you imagine the damage that could cause me? In finance. Everything would be so much better. So much easier. And so much faster. Am I right? Anybody that's got phones, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The young lad said something very interesting that pricked up my ears at the time. And he said, you know, there's a lot of stuff in this that really does need to be removed, deleted, put aside. It's not going to do you a pick of good, even if we can transfer everything over onto the new phone. There's a lot of this stuff here that's only going to slow down and cause problems with your new phone. Well... If ever. So eventually, after a wee bit of trepidation, Flora says, okay, we'll go ahead. It's just like the description sometimes in our lives. Our lives become overloaded with stuff that we don't need. Stuff that can cause us harm. Stuff that can cause us to Slow down in our walk with the Lord. We've heard a bit of that this morning already. And isn't it lovely that it all just fits in in that sense? Our life seems to be going along quite nicely. And something suddenly comes in and causes hurt, causes pain, causes us to suddenly stop. And things happen. And almost at times it can cause us to turn around and walk away from the Lord. But God has given us a new life. And if we just bring those things to the Lord, He'll sort them out. Our lives can be running along so smoothly, so encouraging. 
We fill our lives, some of them with good things, some of them with legitimate things, some of them right and all the rest of it. But ultimately, they're slowing down what God wants to do in our lives. God has given us a new life. And perhaps we need to be like that old phone and just stop for a few minutes and take stock of our lives and say, God, what exactly is going on here? There's more to life sometimes as Christians than what we think. And we need to make decisions in our lives. You all know, well, it was 58 years and three weeks ago that I first got saved when I walked into a church in Motherwell. And I'm not going to go over all of that there. But that challenged my life. I thought my life was quite good at that moment. I was enjoying life. I was in the steelworks. I was earning plenty of money. I was, you know, enjoying things. Things were good. But walked into that church on that Sunday night and the crowd of young folk that was in the, sitting in the back three or four rows, I looked at them and I thought, what have they got that I haven't? And that night I gave my heart to the Lord, my life. I handed my whole life over to the Lord and said, Lord, take my life because there's got to be something better than this. And boy, when I look back over these 58 years and three, three weeks, I realize just how much God has got for us. And folks, I want to say to us, whoever are age this morning, don't settle down with what you've got in God thus far. Don't settle, dare I say it, with the old phone and what God's got. God's got more for you. God's got more potential for your life. God's got even more plans for your life at your age, whatever age that might be. Now, I don't look like 75, do I? But I am. On the 6th of June this month, last month, I turned 75. And it's lovely when people come up to me, oh, you don't look anything like it. And it gives you that bit of encouragement. Well, I want to say to you something, folks. God's looking at you and I this morning, and he really doesn't see our age. He just sees the potential that you, he has in you and me to do something amazing for him. And I've never regretted what God has done in my life. The potential... The gifts that are in you, like in that lovely new phone of Flora. And she hasn't accessed half of it yet, I'm sure, of what God has got for you. And folks, I want to say this morning, we probably have not accessed half of what God's got for our lives. Half of the plans that he's got for our life, that he wants to bring to fruition in whatever length of time we've got left, looking at the world situation at the moment. I have been blessed and I'm still challenged with what God can do when I give him free reign in my life. I'm amazed at what God has done as I look back and recount because I simply said, God, you have reign of my life and let him go. I've watched people whom God has put me in relationship with grow and develop and change and mature into what God wants them to become. But I tell you what, folks, that life there in the NIV, it says what your, your life is new, only like it's just begun. And folks, until the day we breathe our laugh, last breath, God is still in the business of doing new things in our lives if we only give him the chance. I've never looked back, and I don't ever want to go back. And I could spend all day telling you stories, but I ain't. But it was all because I made that decision many years ago that God would give me a new life that was worth living for Him. A new life with more potential, more data, more apps, whatever way you want to put it. And God will do the same for you and I today. But in that, He also said another little thing, and this is my second point. He said when we came back a couple of hours later, he said, I will try to make your old phone, your new phone, sorry, as similar to your old phone so that it operates the same and all the rest of it. And I thought to myself, well, what's the use of having a new phone if that's the case? 
if it's just going to operate the same as the old, why should I invest in a new one? Come on, are you with me? Why bother? We've got three or four old phones in the house. <clears throat> the least I say about that, the better. I could have gone back and got one of those, couldn't I? They're still working. But there would have been so much less in them than what there is in the old phone that we just got rid of or in a new one we're about to get. Big mistake. When Flora then rebooted her phone when she got home, it was then she discovered <laughs> some of the stuff that she thought was okay was no longer there. It was actually did not transfer over into the new phone. And that's what God wants to do with our lives. Wherever we are, he did, wants to take the old stuff. And it's not, don't, don't misunderstand me, folks. There is a time in Ecclesiastes for everything. There was a time for Noah's Ark. There's a time for no Noah's Ark. There's a time for everything in God, and those timings are right. And it is sad in a sense. But folks, we need to move on in God and see what God's got for us, what new things God has got for us. And thank God for the old and all that he has done in those times. The young man said to Flora, you are going to have to methodically go through your phone with the stuff that's left and make choices of what you remove or delete because there's stuff in there that he felt would only cause problems for the new phone. And you know, sometimes in the Christian's life, there is things in our lives that we need to check out and ask ourselves, are they, not going to cause me, are they going to cause me not to work as efficiently as God wants me to work? Are they going to cause me harm and distress? Now here I am going to ask a question and ask you to respond. Can you tell me what things you might think, not particularly in your life, we're not into the confession thing at the moment, okay? But think about something that might cause your life not to be up to its full potential. Anybody want to answer me? Sin. Sin. Right? Yeah. Anything else? Oh, you're all perfect here then. Hopes and dreams, unfulfilled perhaps. Correct. Holding grudges. That's right. Absolutely. Holding on to hurts. And not letting them go. Habits. habits. Good habits and bad habits. That's right. Always work on the good ones. The bad habits. We don't need them. We don't need them. That right? You know, Paul the Apostle, he actually says, all things are permissible for me as a Christian. And lots of people use that. And I think they misuse it. I really do think they misuse it. I really do. I'm not going down that road just yet. That's for another day. But there are some Christians think, well, and I ask them a question, is how close they think they can get to the non-Christian life and walk the Christian life. You can't. You can't do it. There are things that we as Christians, Paul puts it like this in the NLT, you say I am allowed to do anything. <clears throat> but he then goes on and says, but not everything is good for me. You say I am allowed to do anything, but everything is not beneficial for my life. That puts a whole different light on it altogether and how that little part of Scripture should be interpreted and understood. There are things in our lives that we need to get rid of because they're not beneficial to us. You get what I'm saying? It's not beneficial. And I need to be so careful here. To go speeding up and down motorways at 90, 90, or 100 miles an hour. That is not beneficial, folks. It's not beneficial 
to not have a good night's sleep. Am I right? It's not beneficial to have some of the hurts that we hold on to. Sometimes. And I have, there's a lot of new folks here. But a number of years ago when Flora and I were here in Colville, I went on holiday and one of the gentlemen I worked with in Lee Cooper's funerals, directors died, David uh, Cop- Copstick. And they were determined that I would do his funeral when we came back from holiday. We'd only just arrived the day and they waited. And, and during that time, I said, Lord, how am I going to handle this guy's funeral service? I went to bed that night and I was younger then so it was a vision not a dream because it's old men that dream dreams and I had a vision that night and in that vision God says I'm not hearing you John quite as clear as I should I'm not hearing you John because you know and I woke up in the middle of the night crying my heart out what on earth is going on here Because all I was asking for was, how do I conduct this guy's funeral? But God's talking to me. I shared it with Flora and the following night, same happened the following night. And during that second night, God says, I'm not hearing you, John, because many years ago, these two men, and actually named the man in the dream, sorry, the vision, they were only doing their job but you were hurt by what they said and did to you. I thought I'd glossed over it and let it go. But you have not forgiven them for what they said to you, even though it was un- and it was unjustified. And until you let go of that, I'm not hearing you quite as clear as I should be. And I, in that dream, I confessed and I asked God to forgive me or help me to forgive those two men. One of them was already dead. But I forgave them. And then the dream carried on and in the dream it said this. John, do you remember what David used to say to you when he phoned you up about a funeral? And I said, yeah. He says, it's David Copstick. And I said, yeah, David, how are you? And David always said, I'm all the better for hearing your voice. He said, you use that statement when you were talking about this man's funeral service. And I said, why, Lord? He said, because you have let go of that unforgiveness. You've let go of that hurt. And God restored that relationship for me. And sometimes we need to let the old stuff go. Go through methodically your phone, in that sense, if I can use that expression, Go through your life. Perhaps things that will block or are not beneficial to you, let them go. Let the old phone go. Flora let it go, no problem at all, because she had something far better. Is that right? Have I got the idea? Have you got the idea? And folks, when you let something go like that, God's got something far, 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 far better for your life. Amen. And that's the thrilling part about it. God's always got something better for us. He's always got something better for our lives. And I can honestly say, when we left without the old phone and the new one, Flora was very, very happy. And she's still very happy. And I just want to finish with this this morning. And Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1, and it's carrying on the theme of praise and thanksgiving this morning, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what, and I love this, he wanted to do, and it gives him great pleasure. Hallelujah. That is thrilling to me this morning. 
And so Paul goes on and he says, So we praise God for the glorious grace he poured out on us who belong to his dear Son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his Son and forgave us our sin. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. Wow. What a new life we have in Jesus. What a life we have in Jesus. So much potential. I'm 75. And I think God has still got more potential for me. Now, most of you here, and I know, I, I know there, there's only one or two, one, two, three, four, possibly five. I'll check their ages out later that might be older than me. <laughs> but I tell you what, if Moses can start a ministry at 80 years of age and it goes on for another 40 years, the potential for all of us here is incredible. But folks, not everything is beneficial. Let those hurt. And I, I, don't get me wrong, I know what hurts are like. I know what hurts are like. If you have been a pastor for any length of time, you know what hurts are like. If you've been a Christian, you know what hurts are like. Because sometimes we Christians can be a little bit... Hmm, okay, we'll just leave it at that. But I remember a little saying, hand it over, lock, stock, and barrel. Now, I don't know where it comes from, and I don't really understand what it fully means. But I know this much. If we hand all of those things over to God, who knows the potential that can lie for your life. As this church closes one phase in one sense, what's the new phase going to bring? What's the new phase for each one of us in our lives? Don't hold on to the past. It only gets heavier and heavier and heavier. But let it go. And I tell you what, the lightness that it will bring is amazing. Let's pray. Jesus. Jesus. Lord, I remember that old hymn, I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. And Father, we confess sometimes in the Christian life it gets tough. We don't understand that. Lord, your word says that we've got to suffer as you suffered, not in any of the same way. But Lord, we will suffer things sometimes that shouldn't happen that are not beneficial for us. But Father, help us this morning to take stock, to go through the things that perhaps are unbeneficial and one by one bring them to you, confess them to you, but more than that, hand them over to you and let you bring healing, wholeness, freedom, release, peace, joy, and even happiness because of who you are and because what you will replace in our lives. Only good things, only blessings beyond our wildest dreams to fulfill that which we have let go and to let you put into us those new things you want in our hearts, in our lives. Lord, even as we quietly in these few moments, or perhaps some of us just afresh need to say, Lord, I surrender this. Will you take those few moments? Just quietly between you and the Lord. Lord, I surrender this. I surrender that. Lord, I forgive so and so. Even though they might never understand, I release them and I forgive them right now. In Jesus' name. And I ask
ask you to fill me with your healing, your wholeness in this situation. Lord, I just pray for this church. Lord, as Lord, I have always done, Lord, bless it. Bless the folks here, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father, this morning, help us to move into that new thing that you have for us as individuals and as a church. Oh God, help us. Help us.